children myself manisha petkar and i am your science teacher today in this class we are about to discuss the chapter that is biology chapter number 6 life processes yes life processes is very important and essential chapter for you people you have to study it throughout the lesson yes children so today we are going to discuss about life what is life where does it exist we say a thing has a life so it is a living thing some other thing does not exist life so we call it as what non living thing isn't it so if the life exists in any organism that is called as living thing and if there is no life existence in any organism then that is called as what non living thing so since you are studying this from class 3 4 5 in your lower classes that is what are living things and what are non living things so what you have learned children for example if we take this rock you don't see any movement in the rock isn't it so if there is no movement what do you say the rock is non living thing then if you take some example like dog is running dog is barking then you call it what a living thing because you see some movement you see some kind of movement in the dog isn't it so there are so many examples around you for which you can distinguish between living things and non living things so there are some basic features certain features on based upon which you can distinguish between living things and non living things say for example we take movement isn't it so movement is one of the important feature based on which you can say that this is a living organism and this is a non living organism you see a lot of examples around you isn't it that is a boy is running a bird a fish is swimming a bird is flying and you can see some examples like a man is shouting that is the movement in his lips so these movements that is movement from one place to other place the whole body that is nothing but what locomotion so locomotion is one of the important factor to distinguish between living things and non living things then the second factor that is eating yes we animals we all eat because we need to survive eating is the essential factor for example a cow is chewing a cud a cow is eating a grass a boy is eating cookies so we eat we need to eat for the survival so eating is one of the factor from where we can distinguish between living things and non living things isn't it so the third factor that is growth yes so you see growth in human beings yes living things grow or increase in their size from time to time for example a newborn baby yes a newborn baby grows in its size from a newborn baby to a kid from kid to an adult son from an adult son to an adult so it go keeps on increasing in its size it keeps on growing so growth is another factor isn't it then the next factor that is reproduction it is very very important life process factor so reproduction means what the living beings produce the young ones for example a dog gives birth to a puppy isn't it human beings man gives birth to a baby so this is a growth they give birth of its own kind they give birth to a new individual to a new individual isn't it so the growth or the reproduction these are some important factors where we can distinguish between living and non living things one more factor yes that is response to the stimulus response to the stimulus for example you can take any example for example a small kitten when you go near that kitten it gets frightened and it runs away if you go near it if you go near chicks they get frightened by your sound and they run away so that is the response by the chicken or that is the response by the kittens given to you given to your activity so that is response to the stimuli one more basic example 
I can tell you that is a mosquito when it bites on your hand you pat it isn't it so this patting of hand is one more response given to the activity of the mosquito so this is response to the stimulus so these are the features through which we distinguish between living things and non-living things but are these features enough to distinguish can you think about this no because if we take example of plant do plants move are they visible to our naked eye no do plants eat yes they prepare their food but is it visible to our naked eye no the plants they do not move isn't it or they do not they have they grow but to a limited size they grow to a limited size the growth is limited so these features are not enough to distinguish between living things and non living things isn't it also response to the stimuli if you take then plants uh, like touch me not plants okay if you have seen touch me not plant that is mimosa plant when you touch to the leaves it moves its leaves it contracts inside so that is one kind of movement which is seen in the plants but these features are not enough to distinguish between living things and non living things for example a person is sleeping okay a person is sleeping there is no movement at all so do you say that the person is non living thing not of course because the breathing process is going on the digestion process is going on the assimilation process is going on which is not visible to our naked eye so this process they are doing their job inside even though it is not visible they are doing their job yes so these processes these life processes which are not visible to our naked eye but still they are going on so the features which we have seen like movement eating growth or reproduction this is not enough to distinguish between living things and non living things so how exactly will you define living things yes so living things they have some molecular movement inside their body that is a small scale movement movement at a very small scale molecular movement inside their body body that the molecules are moving so that is a kind of movement which is taking place but is not visible to our naked eye you have or you have uh, studied earlier that the organisms they have some basic structures they have some organization they have some functional properties isn't it so they have some basic unit of life that is cells then cells to tissues tissues to some smaller components that is organic system then organic system to organisms so this all process has to be kept on continuously that is the maintaining and repairing if any part of your body is destroyed then it has to be repaired it has to be maintained it has to be it has to keep going on keep going on isn't it so this is what this takes place at a molecular level that is the molecules the the keep on moving inside your body so these molecular movements are not visible to us so even if you take plants they prepare their own food it is not visible to us but at a smaller scale at a molecular level they are doing their job they are preparing their food with the help of photosynthesis isn't it so how do you define living things the living things are one which perform their activity at a molecular movement with the help of molecules so how this continuous supply of molecules is passed how there is continuous supply of molecules to the body to the human beings to the organisms yes that is through the food which you take the food which you take goes to the part of the body isn't it so how this food supply is maintained this food supply is maintained by the chemical molecules which are passed in your body the food is nothing but the chemical molecules which are passed to your body so these molecules has to reach up into your body to keep your processes going on to repair to maintain the damaged parts to repair and to maintain the growth of your of the organism isn't it so the molecular movement is takes place at a very small scale 
uh, if you take example the dog is sleeping it is not it does not know that what you are doing to it so do you say the dog is sleeping and it has no movement but the dog is doing its job the molecules inside the dog it is working on it is going on isn't it so this process these life processes are very important to keep human being alive if the molecules are completely destroyed if this all things this all organism functions of the organisms if they stop then what happens the human does not remain alive so the molecular movement is one of the feature based on which you can distinguish between living things and non living things for example if you take virus so do you say virus what do you say virus is a living thing or non living thing so scientists say that there is no molecular movement in the virus the virus which is outside your body there is no any movement any molecular movement so if you want to say a virus as a living thing then it will be called as a living thing until and unless it enters your body it until and unless it enters the living system living cells isn't it so what do you say uh, virus that is it is living thing when it enters the human body and it is non living thing when it is outside the body so there are so many features there are so many characters so many structures based on which you have to distinguish between living things and non living things so we have seen that the food is the factor through which we get the molecular supply the molecular supply is continuous because we eat food we get energy from this food so from where do we get the food that is nutrition that is nutrition which is present in the plant body plants who prepare their food and they feed us so these nutrition these nutrients we get from plants so nutrition in one of the important process important life process isn't it so basically what we can say that the molecular movements are essential for the uh, growth of organisms because they keep on moving for the maintenance and for the repairance of the damaged part of a body if any part is destroyed then it has to again get back to the original one so who do this work the molecular cells isn't it so life in life process these factors are very important the molecular factor the molecular movement factor is very important which is based on the food which we take isn't it okay students so go through the lesson and if any doubt you can ask me the queries